welcoming. Uh, hi guys, I'm really excited to be here. As uh, being said, my name is Dara. I'm a data scientist at uh, this company called Seek Asia. Uh, most of you probably know it as a job street. Um, and yeah, I'm actually not from Malaysia. I'm originally from Kazakhstan. So in this session today, we're going to be talking about Firebase ML Kit AutoML Vision Edge. This is something new that came out just recently. And um, I would like to also just give you a short um, a brief what we're going to be talking about today. So for those of you who might not know, I will be talking about slightly about Firebase. What, what is it actually? And then we will jump into the ML kit and uh, we'll go through the ML kit, what it already has. And then we'll jump into AutoML Vision Edge. So, but before we will begin, actually, uh, I would like to ask you questions here. Don't worry, uh, it's okay if you don't know. Uh, so, how many of you heard tried Firebase before? Could you please? Wow, that's the number of hands. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So, the next question will be how many of you knows heard about machine learning before? Awesome, you guys are so smart. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, I would just wanted to, before we actually go through everything, I would like to thank Google because uh, there was this Women Tech Makers uh, scholarship that they awarded me and I had got a chance to go to this amazing conference, uh, Firebase Summit Madrid 2019. Uh, it was cool, it was full of so many smart, intelligent people, uh, so many interesting talks and insights, and again about uh, Firebase and Mulkit as well, which was partially because I was there. And yeah, this amazing woman over there, uh, I'm actually, I was actually surprised that there's so many women in tech by now. Uh, all these women are, were there for the briefing, uh, breakfast talk. Yeah, so uh, a quick one about me. So I joined over 20 plus hackathons in the last two and a half years. Uh, which is here, I want some, as you can see. Uh, and then spoke at around 20 meetups, workshops, talks, uh, first time in Singapore. And then passionate about tech, uh, love tech is facts. Uh, so by the way, I'm gonna be uh, distributing some uh, just right over here, so stay tuned. Make sure you remember everything I'm talking about here and you might get one. And then, yeah, I hate durians, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so next one. What is Firebase actually? So for those of you who didn't raise your hands, it's fine. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly introduce you to Firebase console as well. So Firebase is a backend uh, as a service CBS chat started as a y YC11 startup and grew up into a next generation app development platform on Google Cloud platforms. So you could see like a lot of projects had been integrated with Firebase together with Google Cloud. Uh, this is how it looks like, all the projects that Firebase has up to now. So. Uh, today we're going to be talking about MLKit, but other than that, it has uh, quite a number of other products out there. So if you're a software engineer, uh, you could actually build an app only using Firebase uh, without actually uh, having to worry about all the things that you need to like about uh, build better, uh, like improving the quality, grow your business, Firebase is there for you to help. So the next thing, what's machine learning? Uh, Machine learning is actually a field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. So uh, in another sense, it's like you don't have to um, know, like, like you don't have to be really particular about uh, the rules here. It's more about you stuff the answers, you stuff the data, and then it come out, comes out with rules to you. So this one is funny. Uh, I like to actually give this kind of memes. So uh, back in the day, how, how it actually happened. When a user takes a photo, the app should check whether they're in, in the initial park. Sure, it's easy. Uh, just uh, give me a few hours. And then uh, check whether the photo is uh, of a bird. Okay, I'll need, a team research, uh, I'll need a research team in five years. So that was back in the day. That was previously how it was actually, how hard it was to implement machine learning into your applications, into your software, and integrate it because you need a team of researchers, you need a, like, a huge um, amount of data, a huge amount of research to be done. But uh, what do we see now? We, we see a huge interest in deep learning, which was 50 times uh, more than in the last five years. So from here, you can actually say that the models, the 
prediction algorithms had been improved over time, and now it's really, really great. From 26% errors in 2011, uh, now it's only 3% errors uh, we see in identifying, let's say, there is a little bar here. While humans has 5%, so machines are smarter than us. Okay, um, so just to give a brief intro on how it actually works, in software development, we have rules. We have this, uh, let's say, for example, if we want to describe it as uh, walking, you just need to specify it if speed is less than four, then the status is walking. If uh, we were to go to running, we want to add the running. So we need like just an else statement here, and then we can change our status to running, and so on and so forth. And so forth. But what if we want to describe golfing? We can't really describe it in speed, right? So what, that's where machine learning actually comes in handy, because in traditional programming, what we have is rules and data. We stuff it in, we get our answers, just like you saw in the example before. But uh, in machine learning, what we give it is answers and data. Then we get back with the rules. So what we get is something like this. Uh, I know it's not really giving us anything, but that's actually something that machines can understand in zeros and ones. Well, machines are all about zeros and ones. So uh, we give a label and we give our status as a walking. And then uh, the rest of the things, and it comes out as like label golfing, sort of. So then we can actually say what are the rules needed for uh, identifying whether the person is golfing or not. <coughs> so this is like uh, two examples of how you can, you can actually train your model. One is you give answers and data, and then it, it comes out with the model. The other one is inference phase, is like you just stuff in data, and then it comes out with predictions. Um, those two are also kind of referred as supervised and unsupervised learning. In supervised learning, you have your labels already just now as walking, running, and then you can actually get the model. But in unsupervised learning, you don't have all these labels, so the model actually comes out with some sort of prediction based on your data. So you don't necessarily know, need to know the answers. So how does it work? Uh, this is uh, the most common example of machine learning um, for deep learning, actually. Uh, it's basically all the numbers, handwritten numbers, uh, how machines actually can identify. For us, of course, we understand that it's just eight written in different like formats, but for machines, it's really going to be tough to identify whether there is eight or not because it could be located in a different uh, position. It could have like some weird eight, which looks like G. Uh, so many, many possible outcomes. So how you actually train it? This is how you are actually going to pass it to your model. You see the eight here, it will turn into an array of uh, numbers. And then what will happen is it will go to the convolutional layer, uh, and then it will train it. So that's how you actually do it in machine learning. Basically, it will just come up with uh, layers and layers and layers, and then it goes back with the results. And then if you want to train it more, you can actually pass it again with different uh, hyperparameters. And then you, you do it back and forth, and then you can get your own model. Uh, so that was back in the day. And it's still happening, actually, researchers are still using the same uh, layers, the same neural networks. And that's, uh, that's uh, the steps. Th those are the steps that you actually do um, to implement machine learning. So first, first thing first, you prepare your data. Uh, you develop a model. Train, tune, and evaluate the model. This is a huge part as well. Uh, then deploy your model, get your predictions. So in here, we need like ML experts, data scientists, all these kind of smart ass people uh, out there. And then uh, they require like what, a few years to train it, to test it and all that. And then only you can actually deploy a model. By the time you develop your model, it might not be relevant anymore. And then that's actually what usually happens. Um, but now with MLKit, it actually simplifies the whole process. What it, what it does is that instead of taking all these steps of preparing training data, developing model, and training it, uh, you can actually just get the uh, select model from the ML kit, um, get the API, simple code of calling that API, done. You get your predictions. And you will see that in, later in the demo. Uh, so this is actually all the ML kit products that they have as of now. Uh, they have text recognition. Uh, they have barcode scanning, phase detection, Image labeling, landmark detection, object detection and tracking, which is something new. And then uh, nature language, uh, language identification, smart reply on device translation. And then custom is like model serving. And then this is the one that we're going to be covering today, AutoML Vision Edge. 
Well, uh, before we actually jump in later, I would like to show a bit of a demo uh, on my app over here for text recognition, uh, for landmark detection, and a bit of uh, face detection as well, just for fun. So let's jump into that demo. So, okay, uh, just get the next image. So how it works is that we just implemented um, some small code, some, some small portion of code in our iOS app, and then what it does is that it can detect the face over here. So it, it then comes out with like, where is the uh, head evaluated angle, all these kind of angles where you yeah, can actually use it to probably predict some, I don't know, emotions, like if the person is smiling, probably the X and Y axis goes up, then from there you can actually get it, and get the idea that, oh, the person is smiling in the picture. And okay, I can do it on the image. What if I wanna try the video? Da, so you can see. Okay, it doesn't detect you guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so it basically can uh, identify uh, your face and uh, all the features. And it's quite fast, it's like, no matter how much I move it, it's still tracking my face. Whereas compared to, I've tried OpenCV before, it was just super laggy, super slow. And yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, but Firebase is actually making it seamless and fast. And it, this is actually much better than it was before, uh, a year ago when they launched it. And then next one, let's try text. Where is the... There you go. Uh, it's seamless, it can identify it fast. You can identify there is a gallery, please enter one. And then it comes up with, uh, with the text itself. So let's try image labeling here. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, where is it? Okay. So this is on device. By the way, I forgot to mention. Uh, the ML kit, it comes with on device or on cloud. On device is basically whenever you uh, the upload your app, it will come with the, uh, with the bundle. But on cloud, it will the model will be run on the, uh, on the cloud, on Firebase itself. So which means it's a better accuracy. But then if you want something simple, you can still use on device. So this is on device. Let's see, uh, oh sorry, this one is wrong. <laughs> uh, then the next one I would like to see is image labeling. Yes, this is the one. I would want to take out this image and then, yay. So uh, this is actually the problem, uh, the problem I'm gonna be, we're gonna be discussing for AutoML. Uh, so you can see that it identified the wedding dress. And then all the other things like gown, closing, bridal, closing, bride, whatever. But one thing I wanted to do is um, I wanted to identify whether it's a Catholic dress or not, whether it's a Japanese dress or not, whether it's like uh, which culture does this dress belongs to. And the API doesn't do that for me. So um, what should I do? I'm going to go ahead with AutoML and try that out. So AutoML is actually what it will do for me is that uh, instead of all this, I'm going to prepare my own training data, all the hundreds and uh, hundreds of images of uh, wedding dresses. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass it over. It will train the model for me. That's where AutoML is super useful because I don't have to tune it. I don't have to train it. I don't have to go through all of these steps. It will do that for me. And then actually I can also de deploy it uh, instead of having a DevOps guy to do that for me. So this is the problem statement. Um, I collected a few number of images of the um, Kazakh wedding dresses uh, versus the normal wedding dresses. So you could see that for a human eye, you can uh, identify that, oh, there is this uh, ornaments over there, there is this head over there, and in here you don't have it. But for machine to understand it, it's still gonna be classifying it as just a wedding dress. <coughs> So the steps goes as follows. I took the normal wedding dresses, I took the Kazakh wedding dresses, the pictures, around hundreds of them. Uh, then what I did is that I passed it to AutoML Vision Edge, uh, and then for, leave it for a few hours, and then comes out with a TensorFlow Lite model for me, which I could deploy on device or web, it doesn't matter. So let's do some demo. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna go to the, dashboard itself. 
So MLKit is located over here, and here are the other products that you could be uh, trying out in Firebase as well. So um, the, the OTML is located here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, add data set. Call it like, I don't know, I call it so many things already. Waiting, KZ. Oh, sorry. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create it as a single label classification because I only have one, uh, category, one for category dresses and one for normal dresses. So then it will direct me here. What I have to do here is I need to browse for files. Okay, it's located in my dresses. So those are the files I'm going to pass. All the images for Kazakh Dreyfus and all the images for normal. Uh, but instead of that, I will just pass it as a zip file to make it faster. Uh, where is that zip file? Uh, okay, I can find it. So uh, I'm just going to pass it as it is for now. <coughs> I mean, you can do it both ways. You can upload the zip file. You can just select all, all your images. So this will take some time. Um, I'm, I've already uploaded my images over here. And you see that I added two labels, which is Kazakh and normal. Um, actually, advisably, you input more data than just 100 images, because uh, I got the results that are just too good to be true. Uh, so there is clearly an overfitting here. Uh, but for now, for just the testing purposes, I've uploaded only hundreds for each because, I mean, I'm lazy. <laughs> There's so many pictures I need to take off, right? Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trade the model. Again, it will take some time. So let's quickly jump into already trained the model. So you could see that uh, it's quite, uh, I mean, self-explanatory. I get the precision, I get the recall, I get the latency. And I also get the uh, true label, uh, uh, predicted labels. So in here, you could see that there is overfitting. Why? It's because it's too good to be true. Like, it's almost 100% accuracy. It's just, I don't know. If I were to stop something else instead of the Kazakh dress, probably won't identify one. Then there is precision, 91.43%. Uh, Again, too good to be true. Recall is too good to be true as well. But uh, one thing good here and really informative is that I get like, 94.4% of identifying as normal weddings, wedding dresses, but it's still identify 5.6 of them as a Kazakh dress, which is still okay, but the Kazakh wedding dress is getting 100% accuracy. In here, I would be like suspicious already. I would retrain, I'll pr probably add more like uh, pictures of wedding dresses and retrain it. Okay, so the next step comes in. I would like to test it. So here comes the interesting part. I'm just going to stop the picture that we took of ourselves in the wedding that I attended recently. By the way, Kazakh weddings are awesome. Uh, so in here you see the bride and it, even if there are many people over here, it still identified it as a Kazakh wedding dress instead of a normal wedding dress, which is cool. Um, I get to get like probably useful insights for, for myself. But what if I stuff some random image? Let's just see if it's actually going to work. I didn't try that yet. <coughs> so that's why they say don't do the modelings. OK, that's just my friend's picture. <laughs> so you, still, you see that it's still as far as the wedding dress, probably because of your facial features, because she's from Kazakhstan as well. So of course, it's not ideal. As I say, it's overfitting. And you could clearly see that if you give some random images, of course, it won't be able to identify one. OK, so next thing. Um, probably you might be wondering how accurate it is. OK, that's good. I can just simply collect my images and then pass it over. But how sure I am that this model is actually good enough? Well, it's actually good. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. It's 1.8 times better than the usual mobile net v2. And those models were very hard to create, very uh, algorithm intense algorithms. Um, and it's actually. Quite, quite good in, in, in general, it's performing well. But what if I want to add one more? I want to add Japanese dresses now. Uh, so it will still, like, if I were to pass it in, it will more, most probably identify it as a Kazakh dress again. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to train it again, and now with another folder called Japanese wedding dresses, where you just collect all the necessary dresses for you. And then the question will be, how do I switch? 
So I developed a new model. It's much better than the previous one. So how do I switch? The next one, you can actually switch by using the remote config uh, given by Firebase itself. It's like a separate product uh, on its own. Uh, so what it actually do is that you would simply create a new uh, config parameters and then you switch it uh, with a new model. Of course, you can directly deploy with, a, with your new model, but it's just not, not advisable, I would say. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is, in my iOS calls just now, I'm gonna create a, a remote config uh, file and, and Firebase remote config, and then get the string of the my model. So just now you see that we call it my model. I'm just gonna get it as it is. So for example, if I were to be in Japan, uh, it will switch over to the Japanese dresses. If I were to be in Kazakhstan, it will switch over to the Kazakh dresses. But where do I get the data? Okay, the way I did it is I just Google, I just collected all these images and stuff it in. But that's really tedious process, right? Um, I'll have to go through each one by one, one by one, make sure it's a Kazakh wedding dress and add it in. So how does Firebase actually propose to handle this? Well, they created this custom image classifier app, which is open source, you can go ahead and try it out, uh, which basically you get your um, images, you just uh, click like Apple, you just take pictures of the Apple and then you train it. So in the, in the app itself, the next user comes in, they will see all these images already. They don't have to get, go and get them by themselves. But of course, for my case, there for sure wasn't Kazakh wedding dresses, so I still had to do it on my own. But I'll for sure upload one. You can get, get it, test it later. So uh, that, that's how it actually works. And now it is the prices time. So for those of you who listen that, uh, closely, let's try. Question one, what are the original uh, steps to implement machine learning? Anyone? Data collection. Data collection. Data collection. And then? Data Training. Education. Modern. No. no. Okay, the girl over there. <coughs> first, you must prepare your training data first, which is like a wedding dress data set. And then you develop a model. <laughs> train. As I was saying already, right, you also have to test it very whether the model is okay. Yes. After which you will have to deploy and then and then your app will will be the prediction. Yay! Okay, cool. <laughs> so we are getting the first prize over here. I'm surprised it's a girl. Good. <laughs> so yeah. I'm just gonna pass it over to you. Thank you. Congratulations. Don't worry guys, there are four more questions over there. You still have a chance, but you won't get the socks. Next one, how ML security changed from 2011 compared to today? 3.1? You're all giving me some random numbers. Give me the actual numbers. <laughs> Okay, okay, good. So, who is it? Can you get your name? Davish. Davish, congratulations. <laughs> Next one. How fast uh, an interest in machine learning has been for the past? 50. Huh? 50 years. 50 years. In the past? How many years? Okay, he was first, sorry. <laughs> Congrats. Oopsie. Okay, next one. Traditional programming versus machine learning. What are the key differences? So okay. You give the you give the machine. In the traditional programming, you give it rules, but in machine learning, you will let the machine actually. Come up with the rules. Good. Good. Congratulations. There you go. Good one. Okay, then the, the last one. Sorry, boys. This is for girls only. <laughs> well, I mean, the price itself is a bit of a girlish right? <laughs> so what's the on-device recommended model to use once AutoML is done training? It was there in the picture. Come on, guys. I mean, girls. <laughs> Sorry. Girls, do it. Or else I have to pass the earrings to guys. Oh, okay. 
Yay! Congratulations, you get the five earrings. Okay, good one. Quite fast. Now, uh, I'd like to finish this off by saying that, okay, AutoML is still kind of, I don't know, alarming for most of the data scientists out there uh, because it might just simply steal our jobs. But um, it's still not up to the point. It still requires your involvement into it. You, you still require to collect your data. You still require to tune it if something goes wrong because uh, some models are just specifically good for some use cases, some are not. So if you have a simple use case, you still can use AutoML. But if you have something like more specific, let's say the, the example just now as a show, like you, I, you, I want to identify what is the type of dresses, then probably you need to have like your own input as a data scientist. So it's, I would say my job is still not threatened yet, but it's coming guys. So I would like to end this by saying thank you very much for your attention. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed the prizes. Here's all the, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, so if you wanna contact me, if you have any other questions, here's all of my contacts listed below. So yeah, thanks a lot.